Now this is my uh, background, real, true, educational, not fake news. I'm from a different location today and I just wanted to show you my my uh, background poster courtesy of um, Parrot Print Parrot Print in Kingscourt and uh, Clip 15A uh, campaigning against the Green Agenda. So the Green Agenda is a cover for cultural Marxism, communism, massive immigration, a unbelievable destruction of our environment by wind turbines, the destruction of our cattle herd, uh, the destruction of our beef farmers, the destruction of our way of life. It hasn't been assessed under the Strategic Environmental Assessment Directive, so it's synonymous with corruption. And I think we have made our point, the corruption is bad, everyone knows it's bad. So, just to continue from my earlier number 15 video, uh, my group is the European Platform Against Wind Farms. And this word against sickens a lot of people. I met the teacher again in the Kenny in 2011, and when he heard this word against, he blew a fuse. Oh, we're anti-progressive, we're against, against. I'm only against what's wrong, what's not progress, what's damaging, and what's ignorant, and illegal. Now, one of the things that we often get when we get groups formed for any reason, whether it's environmental or to, to stop something else, I have noticed a strange phenomenon, and I don't know whether it's unique to Ireland or whether it's, um, it's universal worldwide. And that is that you will get a group set up to do something, and when they have a chance to fully succeed, they'll balk. They won't push on. And um, I'll give you a few examples of that. One was that uh, way back in 2011, uh, I went with a number of people to a, to a meeting in Roscommon when this was affecting people in Roscommon and people in, 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 uh, in Galway and all over the country, in, from Kerry to Donegal to Northern Ireland. It was a great meeting. There was a good few people there from Northern Ireland. And a group of people took over that meeting and insisted on calling it crew, communities for responsible engagement with wind energy. And straight away, they were into fraternising with the enemy. And their, their motive was that if they lobbied hard enough to the government, they would get setback distances. And I tried to explain to them that under the EU directive, there's no hope of getting setback distances. There can't be setback distances. They're contrary to the law. And they would not listen. And they used to ring me and ask me not to campaign against wind turbines, that we'd have setback distances that would cure the whole thing. And this naivety and this silliness led to that organisation being broken up. I campaigned against it. It had, no, it had no basis because its goal was to cooperate with wind energy, not to... Um, to destroy wind energy, which is what the goal should have been. So that's a, one of the first lessons I got. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Now, these people were well-meaning, I'm sure. Uh, but that's not enough. The windmills are there now where they were trying to stop them. And they're where I am trying to stop them. But at least I fought them. Now, the, the next group then is a group called North East Pile and Pressure Group. And they want to stop the North-South Interconnector. And they're very much on their own. And it has been remarked by groups all over the country how NEP will not mix with others. They wouldn't come to our meeting in Dublin where we had a march and we got 10,000 people and they wouldn't come. And their philosophy is to put the north-south interconnector underground, not to allow any other issues in surrounding it to be campaigned on. And that includes wind energy. Now, the documentation for the North-South Interconnector clearly states it's for 600 megawatts of wind energy in the northern part of Ireland, both north and south of the border. And I, I uh, pleaded this in a case in the High Court, and Airgrid never disputed this. It's on all the documentation. It's on the application for uh, make to make the North-South Interconnector a project to common interest. And it's there as an overhead line. There was no planning application for an underground line. And it is a myth to think that undergrounding is a simple matter. 
On the grounding is a very expensive method. It does difficulties in, uh, in inspecting the, 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 the lines and repairing them. And there's difficulties with heat and there are other difficulties with capacitance and other things. I'm not saying it can't be done. But it has an environmental cost. And it is not possible to install it without proper planning permission and an environmental impact assessment under um, Part 10 of the Planning and Development Act 2000 as amended. Because while the exempting regulations 2001 say that underground cabling are exempted planning development, if it has a significant impact on the environment, it has to have an EIA and planning permission. And that's the law. So anyway, what I wanted NEP to take into account, and they took court cases, and they did make a little bit of advances, but the court cases were, generally speaking, on local issues like hedges and ditches and roads. There was one or two grounds on the EIA directive, but that wasn't any, anything major. What I wanted them to do was to go in on the SEA, the fact that there was no assessment for the public plan or programme, that is the National Renewable Energy Action Plan 2010, and they wouldn't. So, and when the planning application was granted for the North South Interconnector, I took uh, a judicial review in addition to NEP. And Judge Max Barrett ruled that the Board Planola had no substantial decision to make and effectively was obliged to grant the, the, um, the planning permission. But that can't be right. A situation where Board Planola has, has, is obliged to um, grant planning permission for anything can't be the law. That would mean, why would you make a submission? There was 43,000 euros worth of submissions made. And I didn't have the wherewithal to take that further to the Supreme Court in, in Dublin and then on to the Court of Justice of the European Union. But NEP did, and there was an open goal. Not alone would they not take it and run with it and help me to go ahead with it, with the lawyers and all that. And remember, you cannot plead on your own in the European Court of Justice. But not only would they do that, would not do that, but when I went quietly to a meeting in Navan, I never spoke at that meeting. I had a driver, I went out in the middle of the meeting for a whiskey, I come back in, and when I came back in, the, they were around me, the, the chairman, I landed down and ordered me out. And several of the people there ordered me out. And not one of the people present stood up and said I was entitled to be there, even though I was a paid, paying member. Now, I think now, in hindsight, it's beginning to dawn on people that unless something radically happens with Brexit or an, econ an economic downturn, the pylons are going to go ahead and that, that there was a way of stopping it. So this is a classic example of, of, of you can get the Irishman to into, you can get him into a, a situation to actually score and achieve his goal and he won't do it. There was a story t told about St. Patrick and a mythical story, of course. There was, a, there was two mountains like that in Ireland, and St. Patrick came along, and a big rock fell down and blocked the road. And they couldn't get past. And he suggested that they get a hundred men and big ropes and pull the rock out of the way. And the local man said, no, you can't do that, because you couldn't get a hundred Irishmen to pull in the same direction. And that's a, just a, an, a, an old story. Now, oft times there's meetings about various things. And remember my opening video about hidden agenda. And you'll have these meetings. And you need to watch that the people who are there are not on, on the opposing side. So supposing somebody wants to open up a landfill in your community. And they want to dump rubbish from, we'll say, Germany into it. You've got to realise that some the people who call that meeting could be spies. They could be put there for no other reason than to frustrate uh, the stopping of, the, of this landfill site. You've got to watch for that. And the key to look for is if there is elections of officers. And secondly, if there's a treasurer. And I've been at several North East Pile and Pressure Group meetings and I've never seen the officers elected and I've never seen a treasurer. So that doesn't look good. And it means that you haven't that transparency and openness you should have in any group. And you have, you have a dictatorship essentially. And this is a problem you get at most meetings. So if you have a meeting or you're calling a meeting, be aware of it. Be aware of it. And always be aware if you call quicker than, than you would expect, that it's not for some other reason than to stop what you want. Now, I'm not for one moment suggesting uh, that any of the groups I mentioned here ha have an ulterior motive. I'm just saying that there's something 
funny in Ireland and it's not necessarily anything corrupt or anything cheating or anything you can get the Irishman right up to the goalpost and you can be ready to score and he will not kick that ball in and that is a factor that I have observed many many times and it's only lately that has sunk in that this is the case and it's the same as we try to try to handle our our, our, uh, our problem with our politics if we wanted to get a party it will be very difficult to get anyone to agree and one of the keys we need is to keep the issues down to a few the key issues the things that most affect people make them assess environmental projects such as the children's hospital energy agriculture everything else make them do the proper assessment they're not up to it but make them do it that's the first thing make them restrict immigration to EEC countries until we get it sorted and then have a, a, a process of selection of migrants based on merit and based on control. Pick one or two other important issues. If abortion is to be an issue, pick it. Whatever you want, but keep it down to four or five basic things. Do not have 45 objectives because the first thing you need to do is get into power. When you get into power, you can have your order and you can add on. Well, there's no point talking about silly things like chemtrails and fluoridization of water and, 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 and politics in America if you can't solve the basic problems we have here, whatever those few are. And that will be the key. Can we do that? I despair. I don't think we can. And even as I talk to other people about forming a party, it always goes back. They, they begin to turn on you. Because everyone wants his wee bit of thing. I want this, I want that, I want the other. And it's they're neither legally right or right in any other way. So what we need is to hit the green agenda. Hit the carbon taxes. Hit the destruction of the cattle herd. Hit the, protect our, our cars and, and, and vehicles. Protect our fuel supplies. Protect the basic things that we always took for granted. And at least if we get that far started and get those goals done, as we go to move in that direction, we'll either win, we'll either get seats, or if we don't get seats in Doyle Airden, we will force the established parties to change away from the ludicrous, destructive, uh, green madness that they're now going through. So thank you very much. I'll leave you with that now, and I hope that is food for thought. Thank you.